Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. All right, welcome back. Well, welcome back, advanced students, to class 49. And uh, before we launch into our review... I would like to answer the question from a listener, an advanced listener, who has asked to explain the difference between say and tell. So, when do we use say and when do we use tell? I'll see if you can tell the difference between the two verbs based on my examples. Basically, we have to remember that we never put an indirect object after say. In other words, we can't say, say me. Oof, no, 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 no. Tell me. Tell me what you want to hear. Tell me what you want to know. Tell me your name, okay? Tell me. Tell him. Tell her. Tell us. Tell them. On the other hand, when we're using a direct object, we use say. Say good morning. Say hello. Say something. Okay, an exception to this is when we need tell in the sense of contar, like to tell a story, to tell a tale, to tell a lie, to tell the truth. Okay? Now, when we say, dímelo, in Spanish, we say, we, we could say, tell me. Tell me the truth. Tell me what you want to know. Tell me. Or, say it to me, if we're looking for specific information represented by the pronoun it. We would say, say it to me. Okay? Say it to me. Say it to me out loud. Say, say it again. Repeat it. Say it again. Okay? Okay, so basically, there are the differences. So we cannot say, say me. No, we say, tell me. Okay? So we can say, say your name. Tell me your name. He didn't say why. He told them. He said good morning to me. They told me what you said. Tell them what to say. I've never told a lie. We can tell lies and tell the truth. We say, Tell the truth. Please tell the truth. Don't tell lies. Tell the truth, we say. But on the other hand, we say prayers. And w before we eat, we can say a grace, which is the prayer before a meal. Okay, so I hope that helps with the difference. Basically, remember that uh, we never put a direct object after say. So do not say say me. Remember, tell me, tell him, tell her, tell us. Okay, I hope that helps. And now it's time to move on with a little review. It's time to do another review. Let's talk about another topic. We talked about say and tell, and now we can talk about another topic. So, another, another. So, yesterday I, I said, she doesn't want this car. She wants Another car. We essentially have the um, we 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 essentially have the article built into the word an other. It's almost it's like saying un otro. There's so I don't want this one. I want another one, not a specific other one, but another one. They don't use that program. They use another program. Maybe I know what the other program is. Maybe I don't. But it's not this one. It's another one. Another one. Okay, so I will say, we don't work in that office. And you can say, we don't work in that office. We work in another office. Okay, make sure you're participating in this exercise at home out loud. Okay, I don't like that flavor. I don't like that flavor. I like another flavor. My brother doesn't want that CD. He doesn't want that CD. He wants another CD. She doesn't have that version of the program. She doesn't have that version of the program. She has another version of the program. They don't use that microphone. They use another microphone. She didn't tell us that story. She didn't tell us that story. She told us another story. Okay? They didn't look for the solution. They didn't look well, they didn't look for this solution. They looked for Another solution. Another solution. I'm not being specific. Okay, just another one. On the other hand, we use other 
for example, not all people own a house. Some people own a house and other people don't. Not all people like Coca-Cola. Some people like Coca-Cola and other people don't like Coca-Cola. Not all Spanish wine comes from La Rioja. Some Spanish wine comes from, or some wines, I could say, come from La Rioja, and others don't. Mm -hmm. Not all people here like tortilla. Some people here like tortilla, and some, and some people don't, and other people don't. Not all people drive to work. Some people drive to work, and other people don't. Other people don't drive to work. Not all cities have good football teams. Some cities have good football teams, and other cities don't. Not all dogs bite. Some dogs bite, and other dogs don't. Not all people like football. Some people like football, and other people don't. Not all people take the bus. Some people take the bus, and other people don't. Not all, not all people in Europe drive cars. Some people in Europe drive cars, and other people don't. Okay. Not all cars run on gasoline. Some cars run on gasoline and others don't. And others run on diesel. Others run on electric power. Mm -hmm. Not all snakes are poisonous. Some snakes are poisonous and others aren't. Not all cactuses are in deserts. Some cactuses are in deserts and others aren't. Not all animals live in the forest. Some animals live in the forest and others don't. Okay, so back to one more example with another. He doesn't want that book. He wants another book. Okay, some, uh, not all people like tortillas. Some people like tortilla and other people don't. So I hope the, the difference between other and another is clear now. So, in fact, this was a question from a listener a few weeks ago, asked me to explain it, and I did a brief explanation, but it is now appearing officially in class. So, I hope that uh, the answer is now very clear, and the difference is clear for you. Okay? Expression of the day. All right, yes, it's time for our expression of the day. Our expression of the day today is a ballpark figure. A ballpark figure. Now, ballpark. A ballpark is like a stadium for baseball. So in the United States, there are a lot of stadiums for baseball, which is a park where they play baseball. They call it a ballpark. Like Yankee Stadium is probably the most famous ballpark in the world, Yankee Stadium in New York. In fact, they've b built a new one called the New Yankee Stadium. And in Chicago, Wrigley Field. Very famous ballpark. But now we have a ballpark figure, which is an approximation. So if you say, Kyle, how many people live in uh, Madrid? I would say, I, I don't know, maybe four million that's a ballpark figure. It's an approximation. Now, this is ballpark is one word. Ball, B-A-L-L, -L, park, P-A-R-K, B-A-L-L-P-A-R-K, ballpark, ballpark figure. Kyle, how many people live in Spain? I don't know. Can you give me a ballpark figure? Can you give me an approximation? Can you give me a ballpark figure? Figure? Okay, I'll give you a ballpark figure. My ballpark figure is that there are 45 million people in Spain. That's a ballpark figure. It's an approximation. Okay? All right, now we can talk about quantifying area with, for example, meters squared. Meters squared, right. So ask me how big my neighbors plot of land, la parcela de mi vecino, my neighbor's plot of land, plot, P-L-O-T, plot of land. How big is your neighbor's plot of land? My neighbor's plot of land is 600 square meters, 600 square meters or 600 meters squared. 
Okay, 600 meters squared or square meters. Yeah. Ask me how big my friend's house is. Kyle, how big is your friend's house? My friend's house is 120 meters squared. 120 meters squared. Ask me how big Jane's house is. Kyle, how big is Jane's house? Jane's house is 95 meters squared. More common to say meters squared. I sometimes say square meters. But meters squared, let's say, is more common. My parents' plot of land is very big. It's a thousand meters squared. Ask me how big... Oh, let's, let's look at some figures for the largest countries in the world. Yes. Uh, the largest country in the world in terms of area is... Do you know what it is? It's Russia. Ask me how big Russia is. Kyle, how big is Russia? Well, Russia is a little over... A little bit more than... A little over 17 million... Kilometers squared. 17 million. Over 17 million kilometers squared. Huge. Wow. And the second largest country is Canada, which is almost 10 million kilometers squared. Yeah. So Canada is about 10 million kilometers squared. And uh, it's, it's, um, it has the longest coastline, and it shares the longest border with any other country, which is the border between Canada and the United States, which is, a, which is, and I'm not looking at figures here, but I think it's about uh, seven, between seven and 8,000 kilometers, the border between Canada and the United States. It's a massive, massive border. And the third largest country in the world is China, which has about 9 million, 9.5 million kilometers squared. Mm-hmm. Not about nine and a half million. And the United States is also about nine and a half million kilometers squared, about the same size as China. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it depends on your definition here, because in China, there are certain regions that, uh, you know, are a bit disputed whether or not they belong to China and so on. Then uh, next we have number five, Brazil. Braz- ha- ask me how big Brazil is. Hey, Kyle, how big is Brazil? Well, Brazil is about 8.5 million kilometers squared. Yeah, very good. Vocabulary of the day. All right, yes, it's time now for our vocabulary of the day. The vocabulary of the day today starts with the word... Biologia. Biology. Biology. Right, very easy. Biology. Taquilla. Box office. Box office. Yes. All the Star Wars movies did very well at the box office. Number three. Jerez. Jerez in English. Sherry. Sherry. And reflexionar, reflexionar sobre, to think over, to think over, cobijo, shelter, shelter, like the Rolling Stones song, dame cobijo, give me, give me shelter, yeah, give me shelter, there you go, shelter, all right, good, so now we can move on with our last point of the class today, which is uh, our translation list. That's right. Translation. Yes, starting now with translation list number three. Number one. The first sentence. ¿Te puedes imaginar cómo sería esta oficina sin Pedro? Can you imagine what this office would be like without Pedro? That guy does a lot of work. Can you imagine what this office would be like without Pedro? Great. Number two. Cuanto antes hables con él, 
mejor. The sooner you talk to him, the better. And number three, él está esperando que digas algo. He's waiting for you to say something. Yes. Number four. ¿Qué quieres que le diga? What do you want me to tell him? What do you want me to tell him? Number five. Había doscientos personas presentes para la inauguración. There were 200 people present at the inauguration. Yes, there were 200 people present at the inauguration. Number six. Divertete y no te metes en líos. All right, good advice. Have a good time and don't get into trouble. Have a good time and don't get into trouble. Number seven. Eso es lo último que yo esperaba de ti. That's the last thing I expected from you. That's the last thing I expected from you. Number eight. ¿Para qué sirve llamarla ahora? What good does it do to call her now? Number nine. Es un pérdida de tiempo. It's a waste of time. Number ten. La he dejado para siempre. I've left her for good. Yeah, it's a good expression. Para siempre. For good. For good. Permanently. For good. For good. Empezaron mal. They got off to a bad start. Estás luchando por una causa perdida. You're fighting for a lost cause. Yep. You're fighting for a lost cause. Una causa perdida. You're fighting for a lost cause. Very good. All right. And do you remember... The expression of the day today, a ballpark figure, which is an approximation, a ballpark figure. All right, very good. We're out of time, so I'm going to leave you there, but thank you so much for joining me, and I'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. And remember, if you have any questions, be sure to email in, write in through the website, baoganingles.com, send us your questions, and we'll answer them. That's what we're here for. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>